Now we come to chapter 6, and we read here, It came about when it was reported to Sanballat, Tobiah, and to the rest of the enemies that I had rebuilt the wall. We don't read much of these enemies in chapter 5, and perhaps you know why, because they were just sitting back and enjoying the fighting going on in the midst of the believers, you see. And they didn't need to do anything when the believers were fighting among themselves. They could just sit back and enjoy it. But now that that problem had got sort of sorted out, and so the enemies got active again. Sanballat, Tobiah, and Gishan, to the rest of our enemies, they heard that the wall was rebuilt and that no breach remained in it. And that's a wonderful verse. That means it was a finished job. Nehemiah was not like one of these Tirupati Babas who shave half the head and keep the fellow waiting there. No, it was none of these half-finished jobs that he went about doing. It was a complete job. There's very few people today who are interested in doing a complete job. And Jesus said, go and make disciples. People make converts, shave off their heads and keep them there. Who's going to make them into disciples? Nehemiah did a complete job. God gave him one job. Go and make the wall. And here's the testimony. No breach remained in it. It is finished. That spirit of Jesus Christ, the spirit of the finished work, Nehemiah had. And that's what we must have. If God entrusts a task to you, brothers and sisters, you really do it wholeheartedly till you finish it. That can be in an assembly. It's possible in an assembly, right in the beginning, when we say, who can volunteer for the maintenance, and who can volunteer for this, who can volunteer for that, and a whole lot of enthusiastic people who all give their names, the big list of names, but when it comes to doing the job, yeah, you find that uh, convenience. Yeah, it requires inconvenience to build the wall. There was a finished job. Nehemiah said he would do something. He made sure he did it. Otherwise, he should have told God right in the beginning, sorry, I've got other things to do, Lord, I can't do that. But he committed himself to something, and he made sure it was done. That spirit, he who is faithful in that which is least, is faithful also in much. And that's why it's important that we don't try to take on too many things more than we can handle. But if you take it on, we must finish it. There was no breach remaining in it. I believe the Lord is looking for people like that. You read in the book of Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel prophesied out there in Babylon when the people were there and Nehemiah had read the prophecy of Ezekiel. And in the prophecy of Ezekiel, there's a verse like this, Ezekiel 22, verse 30, where the Lord says, I searched for a man among them who should build up the wall and stand in the breach. That is the same word as here, before me, for the land. I looked for one man who will build up the wall and make sure there are no breaches in it. And I found no one. But in Nehemiah's day, he found one. He found one who would not seek his own. He found one who was willing to be strict and lose his reputation for gentleness and kindness. A lot of people love their reputation for gentleness and kindness and they'll never be strict even if adultery comes into the church. God can't use such a man. But Nehemiah couldn't care less for what people thought about his gentleness and kindness. He was strict. And he never sought his own. He never took advantage of anything. He found one. Ezekiel said, God says, I'm looking for a man who will build the wall and I found no one. Someone who will fill up the breaches. And here it is. Here's the man who filled up the breaches. There was no breach remaining in it. We saw that the wall is a picture of the commandments of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, think of it. Think to build a church where every single commandment of Jesus is proclaimed. Not one breach. Not one brick or stone left out of the wall. That's wonderful to be able to build a church like that. I tell you, it's almost impossible as we go through this land to find one church where every commandment of Jesus is constantly preached. But we want to build one like that in different places. Every commandment. No, there, there are churches with gaping holes in the walls. And the Lord says, I'm looking for a man who will build the wall without any breaches. He's looking even today. And may God find such folk in you and in me and in many others. 
And then the enemies are stirred again. They are disturbed at this wholehearted preaching of all the commandments. And the, all the holes in the walls are filled up. Think of the enemies being disturbed because the hole in the walls are filled up. And the small commandments are also being preached. The small holes are being filled up. At Sanballat and Gisham, now they tried another tactic. We are not to be ignorant of the schemes of Satan. They tried various other ways. We saw in Nehemiah chapter 4, they didn't succeed. And now it says they heard that I had rebuilt the wall and no breach remained in it, that they came and sent a message to me saying, Come, let's meet together. Let's have a conference. Let's have a discussion. We'll, um, you know, this ecumenical type of stuff or interdenominational meeting. Uh, these were the people who didn't believe in preaching all the commandments of Jesus. They were the Samaritans, people who feared God and served their own gods, as we saw in Second Kings 17. And they wanted to hold hands with Nehemiah, the wholehearted servant of God. Say, come, let's meet together. Let's be interdenominational and work together. And they were planning to harm me. But Nehemiah said, there we see something about him, the wisdom he had. I am doing a great work. And I cannot come down. I don't have time for all your interdenominational conferences. God has committed a task to me. And I have no time to sit wasting on discussion. I have to complete that task. I have no time to come down to you. Sorry. I'm doing a great work. God has committed a task to me. And I'm going to carry on doing it till it's finished. Why should the work stop? Well, I leave it and come to you. Nehemiah knew that the others were not wholehearted enough to carry on. If he left the place, the work would stop. He knew he had to be there to keep the walls going up until it was finished. Like Paul kept the spirit of the Antichrist out of Ephesus as long as he was there. And there we see that Nehemiah was not deceived even by the sweet words of some of these other people. There's a verse in Proverbs chapter 14 which tells us, Proverbs 14 verse 15, Jesus said, be shrewd as serpents. We have to be shrewd as serpents. Proverbs 14 15, it says, the simple man believes everything, but the wise man considers his steps. And when these people came with a message, sent a message to Nehemiah saying, let's meet together, Nehemiah didn't believe it. And I'll tell you something, there's no virtue in believing everybody who comes to you. No, we are to have discernment. They were instruments in Satan's hand trying to distract Nehemiah from the work. And brothers and sisters, when the devil can't succeed in any other way, he will try to distract us from the work that God has committed to us. You remember the time when the Grecian widows were murmuring in Acts chapter 6? You know what the devil was aiming there? Let's get Peter and James and John now to serve the food, you know. Let's get them to realize that serving the food to these widows is a very humble job to do. And you can show your humility, Peter, if you go and serve tables. And Peter saw through that and he said, sorry, we have no time to serve tables. That's a good work to do. We need spiritual people to do it. But God has given us another ministry and we have to give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word, not just to serving tables. The devil didn't succeed with Peter. He succeeded with a lot of other people who were called to the ministry of the word and who are now wasting their time rotting away as directors of some Christian organization or the other behind some table, serving a table. But Nehemiah wouldn't do that. He wouldn't allow himself to be distracted. Luke chapter 9, verse 62 in the Living Bible says, Anyone, Jesus said, anyone who allows himself to be distracted from the work that I plan for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. Put your hand to the plow and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. It means that if you are distracted, turn back means to be distracted from the work committed to you. Brothers and sisters, God has committed a work to us. We can't allow ourselves to be distracted. And they sent messages to me four times. Four times he said, sorry, I cannot come for all your interdenominational conferences. I don't have time. I've got something much more important to do than that. 
And then Sanballat, they wouldn't give up, sent it a fifth time in an open letter. That means a letter uh, where the envelope was not stuck. You know, when people do that, you know what the purpose of that is. Everybody should read it along the way. And the purpose was to get the news around. And in it was written, it is reported among the nations. And Gishim, that's one of those three fellows there, says that you and the Jews are planning to rebel, therefore you're rebuilding the wall. False accusation, false letters, tracts being printed with false accusations against us. Sure, the devil's got so many weapons that you are, you want to be their king. You're trying to get everybody under your thumb. You're a diatrophies over there and you're a little pope ruling that place. And, and now I wasn't disturbed by any of these things. He says, you've also appointed some of your hired men who just get up and praise you and say that there's a king in Judah. Or like one of the paraphrases say, you've got a lot of people going around saying, brothers, Nehemiah is the man that we need. Think of that. All these accusations. Or saying, you've just got a bunch of yes men around you who just keep saying yes to you. And now he says it's going to be reported to the king. So come now, fear, trying to put fear in their heart, the fear of the authority, fear of the king. And I tell you, fear is a tremendous weapon of Satan by which he hinders a lot of people from doing God's work. Putting fear into their heart. And he sent a message to him saying, well, let me paraphrase it. It's just a lot of garbage, what you've written. That's all. You're just inventing them in your own mind, since your own mind's filled with garbage. It's come out of it. That's all. They were trying to frighten us. And thinking that they'll become discouraged with the work and it won't be done. He says, oh God, strengthen my hands. Think of Nehemiah. No discussion. No sending another letter, big letter back, proving all the things, all the point number one, point number two, point number three, and arguing back. You can say what you like, brother. I have no time. Just commit the matter to God. Oh God. Just strengthen me. I want to build a wall. I have no time to waste writing another tract against these people for what they've written against me. No, no time for all that. Let them do what they like. We live before God's face and continue filling up the breaches in the wall. Continue teaching obedience to all the commandments of Jesus. No matter what they may say. Whatever they may accuse us of. Of dictatorship or popery or anything. 